Good afternoon and welcome to this year's Dairy Unit Mid-Year Presentation. My name is Emily Unger and I'm this year's Dairy Unit Manager. This year our team consists of 18 students. Our mission statement is, we strive to produce quality milk and raise healthy animals, focusing on production and efficiency while gaining skills and knowledge to be used within the dairy industry. Some goals that were left to us by last year's unit that we have accomplished are improving our silage quality as well as addressing our heifer overstocking issue. Goals that were also left to us by last year's unit that are we, we are still working towards accomplishing are our hoof health, our heat detection, our dry cow care, our production goals, our calf rooms, as well as biosecurity. Some new goals that we came up with as a unit are having the livestock units collaborate with the crop units to create better silage quality, improve our transition cow care, improve our conception rate, as well as our overall heifer health. The, our SWOT analysis is as follows. Our strengths are we have a, div a diverse team as well as staff stability within the Dairy Learning Center. We have proaction, we have a strong team work ethic, as well as better silage quality and better knowledge on our feed quality. Some weaknesses are our dry cow housing, our technology, our lack of stable calvings per month, as well as a high student turnover. Our opportunities are Dairy Innovation West as well as growth within the Western Milk Pool, improving our student transition, as well as improving our genetics within our herd as well as our overall herd health. Some threats are COVID-19 focusing more on the students here at Lakeland College, activism, biosecurity, as well as student enrollment. My name is Molly Sayers and I am this year's Public Relations Coordinator. The focus of this position is to use social media platforms and industry networking opportunities to promote Lakeland College, the SMF Dairy Unit, and the dairy industry. Our team has been doing this by posting on their Facebook and Twitter pages, as well as by collaborating with the marketing team to produce monthly blogs about what our team has been up to. Due to COVID-19, there aren't many industry events happening right now, so we invited companies such as WestGen, Nutrisource, and De Laval to come speak to us instead. We have, however, had the opportunity to attend the Westerner Dairy Showcase and a virtual DRECA meeting. As you can see by the graph shown on the slide, the number of people that our posts have reached has made a significant increase of over 49% this year compared to last year during the same time period. For other Facebook metrics, such as page likes and post engagements, you can find them in the handout on page three. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more current updates on what our team is accomplishing. Hi, my name is Reshma Maman and I'm this year's production coordinator. Our milk sale revenue from April to October was over $700,000. Expenses were around $55,000 and, um, and our total net income after deductions was more than $650,000. Our highest revenue is from butterfat followed by protein and lactose. The average butterfat person per month is 4.2 and average protein person per month is 3.2. The total amount of quota we can fill currently is 190.87 kilograms. The graph shows the amount of quota we filled each month with an average of almost 170 kilograms. Hi, my name is Alyssa Crandall and I am this year's VMS and Herd Navigator Coordinator. With the Dell Pro program, we get a detailed report weekly that allows us to compare to other herds around the world of similar production levels. On the scale scene here, we are comparing harvesting rate in kilograms per minute to other herds. We are currently sitting at 1.95 kilograms per minute compared to 1.89 kilograms per minute. The second scale seen here shows us our lactating frequency in second lactation cows. These are the cows that are in their most productive stage of lactation 
and we are currently sitting at 2.86 compared to 2.72 milkings per day. In previous years, we hadn't been using the herd navigator system to its fullest potential, so this year we have decided to implement it into our management practices. We have done this by having most of our cows go on the robot milker, and this allows us to improve our heat detection as well as gives us a heads up on any cows that may be ketotic or have mastitis. Hi, my name is Tyler Wickrink. I'm this year's technology coordinator for the milk or for the feeding systems, ventilation systems, and manure systems. For the past three years, we've been feeding with a Lely Vector feeding system. But on November 9th, we started a trial for where, where we were feeding with a mixer wagon and tractor. Since then, we've seen a 4.1 liters per day increase on our cows' average milk, a boost in dry matter intake, a more consistent feed mix, and the cows aren't as big of a rush to get to the feed bunks in the morning. Some other benefits to this is that we've cut down our man hours from 90 minutes to about 45 minutes. There's no inconvenient phone calls in the middle of the night. And that single asset in the feed mixer can feed multiple cows around the farm opposed to the vector just feeding one. Hi, my name is Cassandra Naus, and I'm this year's feed management range and forage coordinator for the lactating dry and close-up cows. This summer, our unit had decided to pasture our dry cows and springers to cut down on feed costs and provide a smoother, uh, provide a space for them to be housed as we do not currently have a dry cow facility. As this was a last minute opportunity, our dry cattle were moved often over the summer or fed bales to supplement their grazing. As a result of this, we have a shorter grazing season as well as our cost of grazing was determined using an average cost for all grazing animals on the farm that was determined by the college faculty. As part of our range and forage committee, we began the year by doing rangeland assessments on all of our pastures using the Alberta Agriculture Rangeland Assessment Book. As a result of these assessments, we determined that LC21 was the poorest. We then began a rejuvenation plan for LC21 in the new year. More information on this will be presented in the other presentations from other range and forage committee members. Our dry cows are currently receiving a corn silage, barley silage, and hay straw mixture to increase the particle size in the ration. We also provide our dry cattle with a canola meal supplement to provide them with enough protein. We also provide our dry cattle with an Advantage Plus supplement to provide them with the vitamins and minerals needed to ensure the growth of their calves. Our close-up cows are currently receiving a corn silage and straw mixture with a close-up supplement to re the amount of DAs and provide a smoother transition after freshening. We are currently feeding the same PMR ration to both our robot and parlor lactating cows. At the end of last year we began mixing our alfalfa hay and barley silage together to provide a higher particle size in our ration. We also as a result of our lower starch corn from 2019 and a miscommunication during harvest, we have had to increase our supplement amount in our, bar in our lactating cow's diet. To make up for this, we are currently feeding a protein pellet concentrate on our VMS and RFID feeder on the parlor side. Hi, my name is Marco Patina and I am the calf and heifer nutritionist co coordinator. Currently, our calves at Lakeland College Dairy Facility are on a 58-day feeding program where day zero shows where they start, where they first enter into these calf rooms, getting fed milk replacers through the milk robotic feeding system. They are also given free choice complete calf starter as well as free choice hay. Once these calves are weaned off uh, milk, they are head fed a heifer built-in refuge, which is a 16% accelerated calf starter. This helps these calves transition from milk onto silages a lot better. One of the problems they were running into last year was keeping enough feed in front of our heifers. So what we decided to do this year was change our heifer ration from more of an energy-dense ration to more of a fibrous ration. Uh, this helped these heifers maintain their gains while keeping feed in front of them. One of the things we were striving for as a unit was improving our silage quality. We've done this by improving our corn silage by 12.6%, the starch content, and the barley star silage starch content by 6.9%. The way we were able to achieve this was moisture testing our corn weeks before harvest to make sure it's a proper moisture for harvest. Um, every load that, of corn silage that came in, we checked particle size, kernel processing, 
uh, we checked every hour. We did a cost or test as well as uh, factors, other factors that improved our silage quality were our growing season and uh, how we store our silage. Hi, my name is Talia Reese, and as this year's mixed farm dairy representative, I get the opportunity to work not only within the dairy unit, but with other crop and livestock individuals. Within this position, we get to discuss our manure management program. This year, we decided to spread on LC45 and LC18. Between those two fields is about 180 acres, spreading about 4,000 gallons of liquid manure per acre. This year, we not only came together as a mixed farm team, but as well as with other crop and livestock students to meet up with our dairy nutritionist to discuss future barley and corn silage. After careful consideration, we decided to stick with our Austinson barley, but change up our corn to a lower heat corn of 1950 in hopes that we can meet our goal of having a higher milk and crop yield. Hi, my name is Hamish Matthews, and I'm one of the newborn calf coordinators for 2020. Our budget is based off the first seven days of life. <clears throat> in our budget, we include selenium. We give all of our newborn calves a selenium injection to ensure good muscle development. We continue to work closely with our transition cow coordinator as well as our, new, as well as our nutrition team to ensure the diet is appropriate for calving. In our budget, we include selenium. Selenium is very important as it helps prevent white muscle disease. We have also included in our budget castration and vaccination of our bulls. We castrate and vaccinate our bulls upon request of the buyer. We sell Holstein bulls for $100 a calf and Angus bulls for $200 a calf. We sell all of our bulls as we do not have the facilities for hosting bulls here at the college. This means we make a profit of $78.62 to $178.62 for unvaccinated bulls and $72.78 to $172.78 for vaccinated bulls. Hi, my name is Michaela Roska and I'm the second newborn calf coordinator this year. As you can see, our heifer calf budget is very similar to our bull calf budget and is also based off the first seven days of life. We give all of our heifer calves a selenium injection as well as vaccinations at birth. We sell all our Angus cross heifers for $200 a calf, making us a profit of approximately $172.78. This year, we decided to focus on three main KPIs. Our first KPI is to maintain our below average stillborn rate of 4.83%, which is below industry standard of 5.52%. Our second KPI is to maintain our high unassisted calving rate, and our third KPI is one we came up with this year. This KPI is to maintain a zero to low navel infection rate in all of our calves. If you'd like more information on how we are going to maintain this throughout the year, please look at page five in the booklet. Hello, my name is Gursangi Singh, and I'm this year's calf and heifer health coordinator. This year, we have been closely monitoring average daily gains in our calves, starting from day one. We wean our calves at 60 days, hence the first 60 days of our calves' life are the building blocks for making it a high-producing and a healthy animal. If our calves are gaining right amount of weight, it pretty much sums up many things like our feeding practices are up to the mark, and our animal is healthy. The industry average is at 0.8 to 1 kg per day for every 8 liters of milk fat. Our calves had averaged more than the industry standards. We did have a slight decrease in the numbers due to our calves uh, suffering the sudden illness. However, the numbers are getting back on track again. Pneumonia had always been a problem at our barn, but thankfully this year we had encountered less cases as compared to the last year. Last year, in the month of October, we had 13 cases. However, this year we only had two cases so far. Uh, we strive to ma minimize these numbers as a unit so that we can set the new standards for management for the future. Hi, my name is Haley Royce and I am this year's transition cow coordinator. Over the last year we have had 144 cows calve and out of those calvings we've had 101 normal transitions, 17 metritis, 9 retained placenta, 12 milk fever and 5 ketosis. Recently we've been having lots of retained placenta issues which has re resulted in a greater number of metritis cases. Although we are unsure about what is causing this, we think it may be due to a mineral mix-up in the feed a few weeks ago. Our current metritis treatment is to treat with XNL three to five days after calving if the cow has a fever. This is costing us approximately $110, 
and along with metric here and two extra breedings to get the cow to catch and lost milk production, each metroidus case is costing us approximately $441. We are currently looking at using an oxytetracycline pill, which is inserted in the uterus 24 to 48 hours after calving and is cost $6 a pill. Using the oxytetracycline pill will save us approximately $435 per metroidus case. My name is Roald Locke. I'm the Hoof Health Coordinator. Problems we're working with this year is the heel erosion in our milking herd and the digital dermatitis that the last few students were also working on. My goal is to minimize the problem, to minimize the amount of cows we have to put through the chute by making sure we have an effective foot bath to minimize the problems before they become issues. Prevalence of issues, currently we have 32% of our milking herd has digital dermatitis. We have had four ulcers and two cases of hoof rot since April. Hi, my name is Manroop Singh Randhawa. I am in charge of udder health in this year's SMF team. Teat and health is of immense importance in the dairy farming. Teat and teat ends are graded on a scale of 1 to 4 according to their physical appearance. Goal scores in a herd would be less than 5% scoring very rough and less than 15% scoring rough. For the moment, our cows are having good teat ends. The more details about teat end scores are listed in the booklet. My another role is monitoring mastitis cases. The incidence rate of mastitis in Canada is 26.3 cases per 100 cows per year. The total number of cases from October 2019 till September 2020 at Dairy Learning Center were 40. We witnessed a spike in the number of cases of mastitis in the month of December because of a fault in the milking valve of the robot. As soon as the fault was addressed, the number of cases dropped. Hello, my name is Kevin Fisher. I'm this year's Reproductive Breeding Coordinator. At the barn in September, we had a bit of a heat detection issue. We decided to target this with Camar heat mount detectors. These detect heats with built-in pressure sensor and timers to detect heats more accurately. The reason we want to detect more heat is to improve our conception rate to industry average and above. Uh, so far, we've seen some early success. As on September 7, 2020, we had a service rate of 47%, pregnancy rate of 9%, and a conception rate of 19%. This is compared to our October 19, 2020 data that it's at 55% service rate. However, the rest of our data is still being collected. This is an 8% increase from our previous 21-day cycle. Hi, my name is Zoe Minan and I am this year's Reproductive Genetics Coordinator. This year we have decided to continue the use on Elevate testing on all of our heifer calves that are born. It is $2 a vial and $31 per genomic test. We are finding new ways to utilize this tool and applying it to our breeding decisions as well as our culling decisions. This graph you see here, this is our client index that we have with WestGen. Right now we are sitting at 40% for production. 30% for confirmation, and 30% for health. The difference that was made from last year was 10% got taken off of confirmation and put towards health. With these two tools, we have made a new breeding strategy that can be found in your booklet on page 6. In October, we decided to call 17 heifers as we are overstocked by 40 head of heifers. The decisions from the callings were determined by their past treatment records, as well as we evaluated their Elevate testing to make a more accurate calling decision. My name is Melissa Porteous, and I'm the records coordinator this year in SMF. Under the records position, I make sure all treatments and events are recorded in our Dairy Day Planner DHI Herbook and our Dairy Computer Software Program Dairy Comp 305. This requires communication from all team members to ensure we have accurate records. ProAction is a program developed by Dairy Farmers of Canada to allow Canadian producers to provide the best quality milk they can, all while giving cows a quality of life. ProAction is a mandatory program for all dairy producers in Canada. We have completed five out of the six pillars and are, re and are due to com complete environment in tw spring of 2021. My name is Stanley Van Ash and I am this year's finance coordinator. So far for the year, we are pretty well on track with our livestock and milk sales despite COVID-19's adverse effects on our industry as well as our daily lives. So far for our expenses this year, they have been a little bit higher than we anticipated due to an aging barn. Machines such as milk pumps and feed robot issues have given us higher expenses than we were anticipating, but because of our improved silage quality as well as livestock sales, we are well within our budget. To conclude our presentation, I'd like to say thank you to New Holland Agriculture for their on-farm sponsorship, as well as our uh, sponsors within the dairy industry. I'd also like to say thank you to my amazing advisors, Amber Sayers and Yolette Van Eker. 
I'd also like to say thank you to my dairy herdsmen, Nico Frick and Daytona Ferentz, as well as all farm staff involved. And I'd also like to say a huge thank you to my amazing team for all the hard work they've put in. I now open the floor to any questions. So the question is in regards to milk fever and Lakeland's uh, milk fever incidence is 8% uh, and the industry average is three and lower. So I'd like to invite Haley Royce, our transition cow coordinator to explain. So um, we haven't actually had any milk fevers recently. Those numbers were more back of last fall. So my numbers for were last October till the end of this October. And we were having some feed issues last year, which we think is why we had such bad milk fever, but we haven't had any recently. Question? So the question is in regards to proaction, and we mentioned that the last pillar is environment. And the question is, what is included in that environment pillar? So I'll invite Melissa, our records coordinator, out. Um, in the records, or in the environment pillar, we have to go over everything around the farm to make sure it's up to date. So some of those things that Melissa is talking about is ensuring that we follow all of our requirements for manure storage, as well as just like in any industry, we're respecting the environment. Their environment gives good, good stuff to us that helps us produce the milk that we do. So we're trying to give back and make sure that we're replenishing any nutrients that we take from it. That answer your question?